Do you really know what will actually make your patent application succeed or fail? What if I told you it's actually the last 20 sentences of the patent application. If that's a surprise to you, you should watch this video until the end. The focus of patent examination is probably not what you think it is. It's not the drawings, it's not the detailed description, it's not the background section. 98% of what the rejections and issues with patent examination are gonna be relate to this claim section, which is a set of about 20 awkwardly worded sentences at the end of the patent application. The first important thing to understand is that it's this claim section that actually is defining what is being sought to be patented. Think of it like a legal description on a house. There may be pictures of the house, there may be pictures of the land surrounding the house, but what ultimately decides and determines what you own in terms of the house it's a legal description of the house. That's what title is in. Just as the claim section defines what is actually patented in a patent. So there's typically around 20 of these single sentence claims at the end of the application. And the reason is because when you pay the filing fee, you get 20 claims for free. You could pay extra if you want more claims, or sometimes there may be strategic reasons to have fewer claims, or claims can be canceled during examination, but typically there's gonna be around 20. Another important thing to understand is that patents aren't just a binary thing. That is, you don't just have a patent or you don't. You can have really broad patents that cover a lot of different variations, and that's based on the language of the claims. So you can have claims that cover a lot of different variations of your invention, which makes a, a patent very valuable. Or you can have claim language that is so specific and so narrow that it's effectively impossible for somebody to ever infringe on that, which would make the patent effectively worthless. That's why the claims are so important and why you need to negotiate to get the broadest claim scope possible. Just because you can get an issued patent doesn't mean it's going to be worth anything if the claims are so narrow and so specific that it's impossible for anybody to ever infringe on it. For the examination process, once you file your non-provisional patent application, it waits in line at the USPTO for one to three years before an examiner picks it up and will look at the claims and do a prior art search to determine whether what you have in the claims is new and non-obvious over the prior art. And what the examiner then will do is gonna write up a formal office action that is going to detail these rejections. The examiner's gonna say, hey, I found this prior art, either your invention as worded in the claims, it's not new or it's obvious and maybe a combination of those two things. And before I get into how to respond to these rejections so that your rejected application can actually issue as a patent, if you're getting some value out of the video, please give it a like to support the channel and so this video can be seen by more people. Now you have this office action with all these rejections, what do you do? I, I know it may seem upsetting, but this is again, a natural part of the negotiation of examination. It's actually a positive thing. This is how you get the broadest claims possible. Now in your response, you can do one or two things. You can amend the claims, you can add things to the claims, you can change the claim language to differentiate over the prior art, or you can argue against the rejections. Say the examiner misinterprets the language of your claims or misinterprets the language of the prior art. You can amend the claims or argue, and you can get over these prior art rejections. So what you'll do is you'll file a formal response with the USPTO, the examiner's gonna read it over, and typically is gonna do another prior art search to determine, hey, if I made a mistake, maybe my rejections weren't right, maybe I can find some better prior art that will actually read on your claims. Or if you add elements to the claims, the examiner's gonna say, well, I'm gonna do a prior art search to determine whether I can find new prior art that reads on those claims. So this process can go back and forth many times. The average case is gonna get about three office actions, but sometimes it can be fewer, sometimes it can be more. Hopefully at some point the examiner is convinced that what you have is new and non-obvious over the prior art, will send you a notice of allowance, you'll pay an issue fee, and then the application will issue as a patent. Now to understand prior art rejections and what sort of prior art rejections your invention might get, you have to understand what prior art is. Now this video right here, click on this, and this will give you all the information you need to know about prior art, what it is, and how it can be used against your invention. Also, be sure to like the video so it can get out to more people, and uh, thanks for supporting the channel.